guys, this is Production Music Live. My name is Francois, and today we are going to produce a little future bass drop from scratch. I'm going to plugins, and I'm using Massive in this case. So I'm dragging Massive onto a MIDI channel. And here we are with the init patch of Massive. I don't know why this happens, but Massive has two ways of loading up init patches. So if you just drag it in here, you get this no presets loaded patch, which has the wavetable position of square to saw in the middle. And for example, the mix of those two filters is in the middle. But if I select the new sound, now we have saw and we have mix up to, to mix one. And for example, the filter isn't active. So there are two different types of init patches. So let's get started. Let's just take the fourth envelope and put up the level. See if we have sound, take down the volume. I like to work at minus 12 from the beginning on. Arming your MIDI track. Okay, so we have sound. Now we can double click here into this area. We are in the session view. This is the arrangement view where you're going to lay out your track over time later. But now we are going to collect ideas and we are going to remain in this uh, session view here. So if I double click into this area, we are creating a new MIDI clip. MIDI clip telling your instrument, your VST instrument massive, what notes it should play. So I'm renaming this to chords because now we are going to write some basic future bass chords here. And we are going to start with a minor chord. And our root note for this minor chord is going to be A. Because the A minor scale only uses the white notes of your keyboard and it's very easy to see if notes are in scale or out of scale. So basically our A minor scale consists of all those notes. I'm holding Alt while dragging those notes so we can copy them. So this is our scale, the scale that we can, could work with. I'm just throwing it here in the back now. And for future bass, right now we want to create a ninth chord. So let's get started with the root note A. Well, we are going to put in a minor chord. So the first two steps will be two semitones. One, two, three. And the next one will be three. One, one, two, three. So here's our first minor chord. You see, from all the notes, we skip two notes here, two semitones and three semitones here. And from the scale, we just skipped one note from the A minor scale and another one here. So this is our first, third and fifth. Now we talked about ninth chords, so right now we have a fifth and we are going on with the seventh. This is how a triad sounds. Minor triad. And this is how a seventh chord sounds. And now we are going to put on the ninth. This is the eighth note of our a minor scale and this is the ninth. We can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is our ninth note of the A minor scale. Now we have a ninth chord. I guess it sounds familiar. So let's use this as starting point for our track. Okay, and let's create another chord and we can just select the entire first chord and drag it around and transpose it. Holding Alt key, I'm copying. I think I like that. 
That's great. So let's increase the length of our MIDI clip, which is one bar and it's looped right now. So it will loop this one bar, set the length to four bars and select all the MIDI notes and tell it to multiply the length of every note by two and by two one more time. So now we have Nice. Um, so let's, let's keep this structure for now. We are going to work a bit in the voicing of those chords because I want them to be a bit more stable. So I'm moving up a couple of notes. So this one, for example, could be moved up one octave, this G down here. So let's select it. Shift arrow key up, moves it one octave higher. Let's do the same thing with this B. Kind of nice tension in here. It's still the same chord. It's just voiced differently. And let's do the same thing um, with with this G here, maybe. And let's take this A down here, and maybe also this F. I want to take down this G in the bass and even one octave lower. Let's play the bass notes one octave lower. Same A and E here. I kind of prefer it like that because it sort of has the same logic behind it. We are playing the usual ninth chord here and a little bit and voice slightly different in the second one. And we are playing the usual ninth chord again here and with the same structure voice differently again afterwards. So I, I kind of like that. Let's keep it that way and work a bit on the sound now. So let's go into massive and actually keep it that way and put in a filter, low pass filter, filter two here, and move the mix all the way to filter two, and also tell the first oscillator to go to filter two. Now we shouldn't hear anything. Yeah, because now we have to move up the cutoff. But you see we are clipping, so we take down the master volume a bit. And let's go into the voicing tab and increase the unisono to 4. Sounds a bit weird now, so let's put the unison spread up. Maybe like that. Take the volume down a bit more here and open up the pan position. You notice right away how it turns into stereo, very stereo. Let's put in a fun little thing here. Let's take this LFO. Put the cutoff back to zero and drag that one onto our filter and open it up. And mm -hmm. 
Well, let's shorten the range of the LFO automation here and let's take the filter up all the way. All right, let's press the sync button here and um, take a ratio of one over eight. It depends a bit on the range you select for your LFO here. If it goes down to really zero and like kind of pauses in between. I kind of prefer it that way, but you can also control this effect here with the amplifier. So basically now we are taking out the LFO. There's another effect I want to plug in here and that's a little bit of a pitch effect in the beginning of the chord. So I'm taking this first envelope and I'm dragging it into the pitch control of oscillator one, which is generating a square to saw wave here. And now I'm taking it down by 12 semitones or one octave and I'm taking down the DK levels here. If we quickly turn off the LFO, amp down. Well, actually let's create a little shortcut for that. So um, well, let's take it this way and macro control LFO. So on off. Let's go back to the first envelope. You see how it pitches up and we can control the speed of this pitch with the attack and the decay time here. So you have this nice chord pitching, chord sliding effect. And now we can move the LFO back in there. Nice, let's go on. We can work on a different type of chord structure. Let's copy this one. So again, um, like you can copy and, and paste them or you can just hold your Alt key in or control on Windows. And let's use this one. And shorten the first chord to, well, let's go this, this long. Make it a bit more interesting and go this way. Also, future bass can be played at various speeds, but we are now in half time. And usually we would try to play this one at 70 beats per minute, but I'm putting in 140, which is basically the double amount of 70 and we will just play every second beat when we enter the stage of programming some drums now. Well, let's quickly come up with a bass for the same chord structure and I'm just duplicating this this MIDI track here and I'm deleting this one. I'm going into this MIDI clip and I'm renaming it to bass. And I give it a blue color now. If we go in there, we have to delete all the notes that aren't bass notes. Okay. And now I want to create a slightly different sound. So I'm taking, um, I'm going into the file menu, new sound here. So I have the, the init patch loaded up now. And let's quickly 
solo this bass. That's not what we're looking for. We need we need some deep sine wave. And pitch it down one octave. And we are going to combine that with another oscillator uh, that plays a square wave on top of that one. So I'm taking square to saw. And I'm pitching that down one octave. And I'm putting in another saw wave here. And now I'm taking a filter, low pass 4 filter, and I'm sending them all the way to filter 2, all of them. Well, we have to activate filter 2, and we have to put the mix to filter 2. Maybe we can put in a little bit of a tube, so I'm selecting a classic tube in this effect here. So let's keep it with this sound and let's play it together with the chord. If you're wondering why I'm working at such a low volume, in general it's better to work at low volumes than high ones because later you will have to adjust all your channels because you're stacking up noise and in the end it will fill up your master channel and you will clip. So it's always possible to work at lower volumes and then put more gain onto your master channel. So now we are going to slightly change the structure again and we are going to shorten our chord just a bit. And we're going to leave some space after our snare. Our snare will be at 1.3, at 2.3, at 3.3 and so on. Okay, and let's also put in a little bit of audio effects here. We have an EQ8. Let's drag that onto our chords track and remove some bass frequencies here. A little bit of a low cut. And we are going to do the same thing with our bass. But just ever so slightly here. And now we are going to create a kick track. So let's go to instruments, select simpler. We need some sampling device and I'm going to select the simpler for that reason. And I'm going to plug in a kick sample. We have a full future bass course and those are all the samples coming with the course. And this is actually a deep premium sample pack kick. I like that one. Uh, check the description for that sample pack. You can use any kick sample anyways. So let's take down the volume. And now we can create a new MIDI track. Double click in here. And let's take the length to the length down here to 8. We can also go into this area here and name it kick. And it will show up up here as well. We can also change the color down here with to gray for example and now C3 is our root note for this sample so we are playing the sample unpitched at C3 and let's put it to eighth notes and just put in our first kick there it is and we are going to play a different kind of pattern the next one will be placed here let's play it together 
Do the same thing again. So I'm copying this pattern. And now we're going on like this. Well, let's do this one differently here. Let's say we do it like this. Yeah, and we take this one again, move it here, and two more of those. And now we are going to shorten this one. And try something a bit unusual down here. Let's put in 16s and go halfway in here, like this. Let's try this. Cool. So if you were wondering, here you can see the positions. We are at 7.4, at 7.44, and at 8.13. Okay, so now we are going to sidechain our chords and bass to this kick. And I'm going to select a compressor, open it up, sidechain, audio input from kick, and ratio down to something like 8, threshold down. Copy this thing, so I'm, I'm holding Alt or Control on Windows, copy it onto the uh, Chords track. Okay, let's edit our kick. And I want to plug in some um, another audio effect, another EQ here, and roll off some of those muddy mid frequencies with the bell here, and add in some higher little frequencies, less with a bit more Q here up here. So it gets, it gets a bit more snappy. Okay, and let's put in another MIDI track. If you're wondering why MIDI tracks load up with default effects, you can put any effect on your MIDI track and then right click on that MIDI channel and tell it to save as default MIDI track here. It will always load up with pre-selected and in this case deactivated effects. Um, simpler onto this MIDI channel and we are going to select a snare. It fits nicely with, with those other elements. I'm taking this one here. And I'm going to uh, double click it and put it in the third position. So like this. Just one bar because we are always going to play the same snare and I'm naming it snare down here. So now, wait a second, take down the volume of that snare. Okay, now we are going to add in another thing, a little arpeggio. So I'm creating a new MIDI track. I'm selecting another instance of Massive, dragging it onto that one. We, we will select um, some, some wavetable position like this one and just arm this channel and 
Now take down the volume here. So let's take this sound and roll off some low end with an EQ8. You can select one from your audio effects or just use one that already is on your group. And also select a chorus here and plug that in as well. And dry wet can go all the way up to 90 or something. Sound is quite stereo now. And we pick a MIDI effect now called Arpeggiator and move that one in front of our massive device. So MIDI effects before sound creation, generation and audio manipulation effects afterwards. If we copy this chords pattern now and well take it to massive free and call this arp, arp and maybe color it differently and go in there quickly turning this off and we select all the notes and legato have them look like this play it So now we have a little bit of an arpeggio here, but we're going to take the rate down to 1 over 16. Okay, and we're going to say up and down. And we're also going to say steps more than, more than one, maybe four. How does that sound one octave higher? So if we select all our notes and shift arrow key up, well maybe that sounds nicer. Um, we'll see about that in a minute. Now I want to put in a side chain here. Um, we just copy the one from the bass onto this track as well and take a bit more low cut here and now we go back to audio effects and select a simple delay feedback up do I wet down And we have a bit of a resonance here, here, and we'll take a sharp cue and take that resonance out a bit with a bell curve. Let's play everything together. Okay, it's quite loud and we probably don't want to play it all the time. We want to sidechain it to this chord and focus on those little break areas here where we can play our arpeggio. So let's put in another sidechain compressor and select sidechain audio input from first massive channel, ratio up. Threshold down. And now I want to take down this whole thing one octave again. So shift arrow key down. Okay, and now we can throw on a mastering chain on our master channel and add a bit more punch in here. 
So I'm selecting a utility and there's a video on our channel showing you how to set up a mastering chain and I have that chain um, loaded up already in an audio effect rack. I'm just going to select it here but I'm putting a link in the description where you can watch this like how you set up this mastering chain with Ableton effects. I'm just going to drag it in here and you can see we are we have a couple of devices loaded up already. <music> So the input volume needs to be a bit louder. You will see this in the catch peaks area here. Can give those a bit more high shelf here. Right now you notice the kick is a bit late so I'm going into the kick sample and you can see we still have a bit of room here. We can also add a bit of a low cut to our snare. The mastering chain basically cuts off some lows and catches peaks. So if there are elements a lot, like if there are quick elements a lot louder than other ones, it catches those and adjusts the volume. <laughs> And we are cleaning up some frequencies here, usually in the muddy low mids and maybe sometimes in resonant higher parts. Then we have a multi-band compressor, which is basically a compressor for three different bands. One is higher than 2.5 thousand hertz and one is for the mids and one is for the lows and it just pushes the dynamics in those bands a bit together. And then we have a punch compressor adding a bit of punch followed by a sustain compressor adding a bit more sustainy feel overall. <laughs> And now we have a final touches EQ8 here, adding back in a bit more bass and a bit more higher frequencies in case we lost something in the process of removing dynamics. And then we are putting on a limiter and making sure it doesn't limit too hard into the minus decibels here. So around three or something max is enough. <laughs> And now we have a simple future bass drop and we could just move it into our arrangement view while dragging the entire scene and clicking this button here. Now since all those MIDI tracks are looped you can just drag them longer as long as you want and they will loop as you can see here start again and and now you have your first song element could also introduce it with those chords we go back here and 
play something like this. You could imagine building this thing up with a bit of control on the filter. For example, less LFO. Let's quickly open up the configuration for massive and draw in a automation with the LFO and another automation for the filter. So what are we doing here? We want to remove the LFO in the beginning, it should kick in here. So I'm taking it down. See the control knob is down in this area here and it goes up if I enter this area. And now you can imagine playing around with this filter. maybe with a snare combined with a snare here even with a little break and maybe with arpeggios that are already running up um, we go into this massive track and we quickly use a utility for this purpose. So utility can control your volumes. Get it here. Gain. Down. And we put it up after our snare. Something like this. We have a simple future bass drop with a bit of theory around it, a bit of chord theory, a bit of sound design theory, and a bit of mixing and mastering theory. And if you want to learn more how to do this in depth, we've prepared a course for this entire subject. Check the description or check this little card on the side of the video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check our website for samples, presets, and templates. Subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you next time.